Welcome, I'm Craig Sullivan, your host, and this is a very special program for us. Producer Danny and I are changing things up. This is the Click Connect Roundtable, and we're going to have a series of these, and we've got some very special guests today. We're focusing on commercial real estate in Orange County, California, and it is a pleasure to welcome the current and two of the past presidents of Crew Orange County. So if we could kindly bring in Nicole Morris... Stacy Steeman and Linda Padilla Smythe. Welcome to the show. How is everybody today? Great. Great. Glad to have you all here. So let's start out with what are you guys seeing commercial real estate wise in beautiful Orange County, California? Stacy? Um, oh gosh, it is a robust market for sure. I'll be honest, you know, I'm with Pasco Companies and Pasco is, um, we're based in Irvine, California. However, our primary focus is uh, across in the Southeast when we buy class A multifamily projects. But, you know, being involved in so many different organizations, I, I see the market in Orange County. It's just, it's going gangbusters. I mean, trying to find land is, is a challenge. Trying to um, Get the rent bumps is a challenge. Bringing the market back to what it used to be is a challenge. But I think everybody is on the same page and we're getting there. Um, you know, we we have been focusing a lot recently, which not many people know that Pasco does land entitlement deals as well. Um, just north of Orange County, we're focusing on the Inland Empire and uh, we're, we're gobbling up a lot of land in Moreno Valley, entitling it and finding single family home builders to uh, take it on and build these homes. So there is opportunity that lies either in Orange County or just surrounding the area. So, um, you know, I know the other two can speak more uh, to the local market. If we want to go nationwide, that's kind of our expertise. We, we chase yield and go after the, uh, the growth markets where a lot of people are moving to. So. Wonderful. Linda, what's your take on the Orange County market, please? Well, you're seeing a shift in use is what I'm seeing. So like Stacy said, land development is very tight here. There's there's not open parcels a lot of places. So you're seeing a lot of land reuse, whether it be uh, office converted into industrial. You're seeing a lot of that because through the pandemic, that's what really survived was industrial. You're seeing a lot of offices change what they're doing, how they're doing it, the design the, you know, we've all been there because of the pandemic, but even more than that, you're seeing a change in retail use as well. Okay. And so you're finding a lot of uh, cities are grappling with how to have outdoor retail space. And so, you know, because we had so many of the indoor mall shutter close, whereas the Irvine Spectrum or any other outdoor mall, the, the outlets in Orange, they've done relatively well because they have an outside space. So you're seeing a big shift due to the pandemic. And I think it's, it's a good shift uh, for long time use, uh, in particular for retail and restaurant, because you're going to have more of a uh, artisan village feel, uh, kind of like, you know, they do in Europe. You know, there's a lot of outdoor cafes, outdoor, uh, um, you know, retail. So it, it, it's it's a shift, that's for sure. You know, I, I like that. I want to touch on that a little bit. I mean, is, and Nicole, I'll, I'll ask you a couple of questions in just a second. But Linda, you're working on a project right now where they're converting an old theater into an open air amphitheater. So that's kind of getting back to what you were saying, and it's that redevelopment. Um, I think that's a great idea. I think if you also look at Fashion Island locally, I think they they did moderately well because of their outdoor spaces there. I mean, granted, the, the hotels up there have been closed. Uh, one's under renovation. The other one is some other, you know, plans going on, and they haven't announced anything yet. But... Um, I, I agree with you. And I think with, with our weather in Southern California, uh, I think the more open air, the better. I mean, you know, Third Street Promenade up in Santa Monica is a great example. The Gas Lamp's another one. Old Town Pasadena. So we can go on and on about that. So, Nicole, what are you seeing in Orange County? I mean, what are some of the trends, some of the other things that you're seeing, you know, you being the current president of Crew Orange County? Um, 
you're getting, I'm imagining a barrage of information coming at you from a lot of different asset types. Yeah. And what's really interesting actually about what we're seeing is the adjust, uh, adjustments made in our membership type and where everybody is coming from because of the shifts in the market. And as current president, that's something that you know we tend to keep track of. So we are seeing new members in hospitality, which is something we haven't typically had an uptick in. Um, we are seeing a lot of new members on the developer owner side, which is another thing that we've you know historically lacked, I think, a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. So yeah. we're seeing upticks in those. Um, one of the things I think is interesting about both what Stacey said and what Linda said, and we talk about what land is left in Orange County and what land is left in Orange County is probably what we would call dirty dirt, right? And so there's environmental issues that come with a lot of the land that's left available. Um, and are the developers, owners that are looking at that land willing to handle that before they build? And the other side of it is uh, we, we did open a lot of streets, or I should say we closed a lot of streets in order to right. open outdoor dining in certain locations. In fact, I was in downtown Anaheim yesterday um, and they have a great little patch of uh, outdoor dining. Those are all temporary, uh, permitted through the city or rezoned, right? And so it's curious. I'll be curious to see whether or not those continue and what the cities do to keep them open. Um, are they going to keep it? Are they going to lose it? And then what that also does to the leases of those tenants and landlords that are leasing that space. Um, so that's something definitely to keep our eye on as it changes. Absolutely. Linda, could you touch a little bit on that historic theater that's being turned into an open air venue for us, please? Yes. So I am working with Lab Holdings and they own the Balboa Theater. And so it's a historic theater. So, you know, when you okay. renovate or redevelop something historic, that comes with a lot of different uh, 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 restrictions <laughs> is the best way to say it. Restrictions meaning that you have to do everything a certain way within a certain realm. And, and so, uh, we're trying to put together and piece together um, financing for it. And so one of the uh, renovation portions was the roof. It would be very expensive to do the roof. So now the city's allowing us to do a sound study. Um, and uh, we hired two sound study individuals and uh, seeing if we can turn it into an open air venue. So it's the old Balboa Theater right there. Yep. You know, when you go into Balboa Island, you take a, I think it's the first left as you enter and everybody knows what it is. But I think, you know, if, if we can do it, it would be a great reuse for that beautiful historic theater. And it would allow for open air venue and you could have, you know, pockets of eclectic, you know, retail, dining, you know, and, and also have it be open air and, you know, have different things available in there. And I think it would be a fantastic reuse for that area and makes it makes it a more walkable space, which is, right. you know, what people really enjoy during this pandemic. They want to be outside. They want to walk. They want to have fresh air. And and our our Mediterranean climate is just basically out there ready to give people what they desire the most. Absolutely open spaces. Stacy, you and Pasco are a master at internet proof shopping centers, smaller ones, and also multifamily. Would you touch on multifamily for us? I mean, that's got to been on been on fire for you guys for a while now. Oh, it's it's great on both sides. You know, even though <clears throat> excuse me, even though we're not investing in California, um, to be honest, the cap rates are a little too uh, hefty for us. Um, but <laughs> we have, um, we found our niche in the Southeast and we started doing that back in 05 because we did the shift from, like you said, the retail into the class A multifamily space. And by doing so, we have found markets that are really, uh, beneficial to not only us, but to investors out there who want to, to make a nice little living, you know, get a nice cash flow. So we primarily focus in, let's say, I call it the hurricane zones. It, it, it sounds bad, but it's the Florida, Louisiana, Georgia, um, Texas. We love Texas. Um, but what comes with that, and Nicole can attest to this because we work with Nicole on several different things. When we have any hurricane or tornado or any issues that come about, we do hire them to do some of the work um, that we need them for. But as far as the market goes, 
it has become extremely challenging to even find properties and to be competitive in the market today. On an average deal, let's say we find a deal in, uh, let's say Gainesville, Georgia. I just got off the phone with an editor this morning in Gainesville. That market is going gangbusters. And yeah. to find a deal, you really have to have that relationship with not only the broker, but with the developers, the architects, anyone that's involved in the deal to even have a leg up in the transaction. So fortunately for us, we have that. We've been in the space a long time. We're a very reputable company. So when it comes down to the competitive set, let's say there's 10 or 15, you know, potential buyers for that deal, we have a very strong due diligence and closing track record. So we can go in and do a 10 day due diligence, 21 day close, which is crazy. Um, nice. It used to be a lot longer, but unless you're that competitive, you're going to lose out on these deals. And to be honest, you know, we're going after new development and there is so much out there that is newly developed. It's crazy. Um, you still have your market that's going out and rehabbing the old class B and C assets. But for us, there's plenty of class A to be found, especially in the Southeast. Um, so far this year alone, Costco has acquired seven new apartment complexes and that totals close to $600 million. We're on track to close about a billion this year. So there's a lot of activity and we also have sold a lot. I mean, go, on the opposite side, you can, it's a prime market to sell your assets. And so our average hold time used to be seven to 10 years. It is now down to 5.6 years. So that tells you how far along multifamily has come along. And um, so I'm happy to be in multifamily. It's a great space and um, it's, it's, it's sexy, I think. You know, retail has always been sexy, but I think multifamily has become the new sexy, just like Tesla, right? I'm well, going to good about hospitality. We're sexy too. Well, so. and I, I forgot. And hospitality, hotel. I, you know me. I love hotels. I come from <laughs> hospitality. So I always give a shout out to hospitality too. There we go. Well, as I know absolutely nothing about multifamily, and that has been on fire, not only just locally, but nationally, what are some of the amenities that you're having to put in now to, you know, be that spot where people want to sign a lease and be there for a year or two? So... Stacy, let's start with you and then go to Nicole and then Linda on that one, please. Sure. I'd say amenities have always been popular. There's a company called Rent Grata that actually implemented a, uh, a commission system for the new resident and the existing resident to earn bonus money if this resident moves in. But the cool thing about it is, is you're talking to someone that's maybe like you. They have a dog. They want a one bedroom. They work remote um, and they love to go shopping. So you can talk to someone of your life. And that actually is a really cool feature. So everything from where you see it online to where you visit the property, the, the property amenities, I would say having a really nice dog park because so many people got puppies <laughs> or have dogs. Um, you would need uh, the smart home features have become extremely popular. So really retrofitting the apartments out with the smart home features uh, package lockers, um, Amazon, Fetch, Lux. There's so many parcel pending have implemented these lockers. So if you're not home, you can just have Amazon deliver your packages there. Um, the concierge services, housekeeping services. So basically an all-in-one feature. And if you don't have a really nice pool, that it's, you're not going to get a lot of people renting your apartment. Um, right. Also, you know, converting these apartments to having office spaces. So the one bedrooms that used to be popular have since gone away. Now people are looking at more at the two and three bedrooms so they can have a home office. Because they're saving, saving money on the commuting because they don't have to go in the office. So they want that nice extra space um, at their home. Right, and have that separation. I, I, I agree with that. I like that idea a lot. And okay, Nicole, obviously with your construction background, You've got to be enjoying that. Let's hear about some of the other amenities. I think you you also have to put in a fitness center now in, in a lot of these places if you have enough space. But that's just my mind working in circles. So, you know, much like the elliptical. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, very true. But one of the things that's really important to understand, we've all heard it, right? You live in a place, and I'm sure none of them are passcodes because I know what, what you guys procure and what, and what quality of a product that you guys provide. But 
We've all heard those places where my cell service is terrible or my Wi-Fi goes out. That, that cannot happen anymore if you have people yeah. working from home in the apartment. So what's important to keep in mind as we're renovating multifamily is the infrastructure for services like electrical and internet. And some of them were probably installed 20, 30 years ago where speeds were not required as fast as they are today. So making sure that the infrastructure you're working with can handle these faster speeds of internet that you're installing so that your tenants aren't having problems with their connectivity. Um, you know, you have to go a little bit farther than, yes, we increased our speeds. That's great you increased your speeds, but can you also support that um, in, in what's already built there? So that's really important. And then, um, you know, like Stacey said, amenities are important, but what amenity do you have that maybe nobody else has? Because that's where you're going to get your residence. Something a little bit quirky, something that, you know, caters to your culture in the spot that you're in. So whether it's Nashville, Tennessee, do you have a soundstage that somebody can borrow that an aspiring music writer can go use? That would be great. Um, it, maybe in Southern California, do you have, again, I'm going to bring up soundstage for somebody doing TikTok or Instagram who might be using that as the sole focus of, uh, of income. Uh, those kind of things I think we're going to see pick up a lot. I agree. I, th I think those, those regional amenities, like, okay, if you've got California coastal, it makes sense to have an area where you can put surfboards, wet gear, scuba diving, be able to clean it all out and have it secured and not being dragged through the, the hotel or, or into the, you know, the unit itself in a multifamily. Linda, what do you think? Well, I'm going to kind of switch, switch a little bit because I think that, that, it's not even just multifamily, even if you're a single, like for, I used to work for Chapman University. I recently, uh, you know, started my own business, but with Chapman University, we had a lot of historic single family homes right. and they were, you know, rented to our staff and faculty. So like Nicole and Stacy said, we, we had to up our game with our internet connectivity and we had it on campus, but now we had to expand that uh, footprint over to our residences and our guest houses, you know, kind of with our hotel uh, use that we had there at Chapman. And, but even more than that, what I found is since we had these historic homes that were really small, you had a one and two bedroom and, that, and they're, they're like really small. If you had two faculty that happened to be married, both of them were trying to teach. So then I found an uptick in requests for ADUs, accessory dwelling units. Right. So uh, people, uh, what they call, uh, what do my guys call it? A she shed. He created a she shed for his <laughs> wife. Uh, it was one of the, the guys in our construction team. And we put it in the side yard as a, a prototype and basically put air conditioning. We, we, you know, put everything in there and it was fantastic and it has worked out well. So since then, it's become a little bit more popular with some of the staff and faculty there creating this additional ADU space. So these historic homes that have these, you know, decent sized backyards can put a little tiny shed in the back and have it yep. and be able to step away, you know, two feet to their office in a different building in an accessory dwelling unit. So it's been fascinating. And then to even watch with the multifamily, the multifamily units that did really well had that open air concept, had the, you know, companies that manage them pivot to uh, allow for internet connectivity. So it's it's been fascinating to watch on many levels. Absolutely. And, and I think those are the things that you really need to look at. And the Hawaiian word for that is Ohana, which is family. So, uh, you know, there's certain parts of the country that, that has been established for decades. You've got areas in the Hawaiian islands where you've got three, possibly even four generations of the same family there. Um, and I, I think that's a brilliant idea if you have a lot of room, but as subdivisions keep getting more and more housing, the footprint of those lots is getting smaller and smaller. Now there are some incentives in various areas of the state here in California where they want that. And, you know, especially if you've got an older subdivision that's got a alley, 
you can put a unit in the back now and 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 do a few things of that nature. So now Stacy opened the door for me and my favorite subject, hospitality. So and you know, I I agree. I think you know you've got to make things different. You've got to have you know all these amenities, especially on the boutique side. I worked on a transaction where we actually put in a full recording studio and we had engineers, you know, available for when we had musicians staying at the hotel. Um, I, you know, I think you've got to do that. Linda, you've got a boutique hotel enhanced mixed use development that you're working yes. on. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that, please? Same company, Lab Holdings. They're uh, an artistic, how, how, how do I phrase it? An artistic developer is the best way to phrase it. Linda uh, Sedegi is amazing. And, you know, some of their, their previous products like the, the camp and the lab, you know, it's, right. it's really unique. And so they've taken on cottage industries in Garden Grove. And uh, so basically what they're doing there is they're doing like a boutique hotel enhanced mixed use artistic village. They'll have a communal lounge, outdoor lounge area there. They're going to have, you know, the parking be kind of, it's a parking lot, but a, a, an artistic parking lot and have, you know, there to be designs and all that. They have a um, uh, redevelopment, reuse, uh, uh, retail space in single family homes. So the city of Garden Grove has allowed them to rezone for mixed use to allow retail to let, allow hotel. So they're doing a boutique hotel there as well. And they're going to have little guest houses here and there. And it's not a big one. You know, to, I, I can't remember how many units. Uh, I think it's like 12 to 15 hotel units. And then, but it's a large walkway Paseo street that they're going to just create this, you know, vibe that's artistic yeah. and cool and hopefully draw many, many people there. Uh, it's right behind the Civic Center, City Hall, and it's adjacent to the uh, Stillcraft, which Stillcraft is their outdoor open eatery space. So it's a really fantastic project and it's really fun because Linda Sadegi is so talented and so just out of the box thinking. We have a, uh, a flying fence as part of the concept design for the community garden. So, uh, you know, it's going to be really, you know, something to, to see once we're all done. Wonderful. That sounds exciting. I can't wait to see it myself. <clears throat> and there again, anytime there's a new hotel coming up, I definitely want to see it. So, well, and I told hey you she um, has to go to click because you, you guys are <laughs> where it's happening. You know, she uh, wants to, to start into this boutique business that, you know, to have the connections. Right. And that's what crew has afforded us yeah. with you. Crew has afforded wow. that with, with you. Stacy being our lead person that introduced you. Uh, and we are so grateful. So thank you. Yes, this is all blamed on Stacy at a really horrible real estate conference we were at that no longer exists in, in Orange County. So <laughs> yeah. interesting story there, but we don't have time for that, unfortunately. I would love to spend some more time on this subject and talking about the American Recovery Plan and cities and economic development. I mean, we're gonna, I think we're gonna have to do a separate episode on that. Oh, oh, oh.